Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put together a full step-by-step -step guide, just run you through how to replace the timing belt, I'm going to replace the tensioner as well on this 2013 Toyota Hilux D4D. Now as far as cam belts go, these are quite a straightforward replacement. We'll run you through everything a step at a time, include all the torque settings as well. I'm just showing you we've got a full gates kit. I always re recommend replacing the tensioner if you're going to do it. Obviously you can just replace the belt. Um, it's not that much to get the kit with the tensioner as well. But I'll just run you through. If you just check the links in the description below, I'll put links to the parts where you can get them from, all the tools and all the torque settings. And I'll just list them all in the description below if you want to check any of them out as we do it. Um, but we'll just get started. I'll run you through everything a step at a time. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. I've got quite a few other timing belt replacement videos on there as well. Um, first thing we'll do, just take this top cover off. All you need is a 10mm socket. I think we've got five 10mm just to get off. So we'll just get them off quick, get the cover off and run you on to the next step after that. Right, so now that the top cover's off, next thing we're gonna do is remove the actual timing belt cover. Now it's gonna be a little bit tight to film some of this because it obviously it's just tucked down. It's a little bit of a tight space down here, um, but I'll try and film it all as best as possible for you. Um, but basically this top cover, it's just got six 10 mil bolts holding it on. Obviously you can see these top two, there's two in the middle and two a bit lower down as well. So it's a little bit hard, hard to show you on the camera. Well, basically I'll just get the cover off and then just show you on the casing where the bolts are located. So that's quite straightforward to get off. First five bolts was really easy. The bottom one in there, it's not actually too hard to do or anything. It's just, it was a little bit tighter to get in with the battery ratchet, just in that bottom corner. The fan just made it a little bit tight, that's all. But it's not, not bad at all, ready to get off. So that's the cover out of the way anyway. Right, so now the cover's off, we can see all the timing belt. As you can see, it's quite a straightforward set out. Basically just running on the camshaft at the top here, down to the fuel pump and just the tensioner pulley there. So, um, but all we're gonna need to do next is just set it up in the timing position. Basically the timing marks on the pulleys, just on the camshaft here, I've just got a little marker there, that little um, line on the pulley, and it needs to line up with this little arrow on there. There is a mark on the fuel pump as well. I'll show you that, it's a little bit tricky to sort of get the camera down to show you, but once I've got it, the camshaft lined up, I'll show you the mark on the fuel pump there where it lines up to. So just to turn it over, we're just going to use the crankshaft. You can just see the crankshaft down there. And basically the centre bolt on the crankshaft is a 22mm bolt. So we're going to use either a spanner or a 22mm socket. And just turn it over, we'll be turning it over clockwise. And just, to, and just watching this marker until we can line it up with the little arrow there. Once we've got that in line, I'll see if I can show you on the camera the line for the fuel pump, make sure that lines up. And sometimes, because the fuel pump marks a bit around the side, sometimes I'll just put a little paint mark on the top. It's just a little bit easier to refer to. Once we've got it in the time efficient position, we'll then be able to take the tension off it so I can get the belt off. Um, but we'll just spin it over now and line it all up. Right, so we're all set in the timing position now. The only thing I did just do, just undid the power steering reservoir, just took it out of the way. It's only held on by three 10 mil bolts, really easy to get out of the way. It's just, it made it really tight with the ratchet down there. Just kept scratching my arm as I was doing it. So I just pushed, took that out of the way just to give us a little bit more room, that's all. Um, but as you can see on the camshaft here, we've got the little marker there, which is lined up bang on with the arrow on the back case in there. You can just follow it straight through on the, obviously on the two for the cam there, if you want. Um, but now that that's there, if I just put the phone down, I'll just show you the mark of the fuel pump and where it lines up as well. Basically just below the actual sensor pickup there, so. Now I'll just try to focus in on it, but you can see the big arrow there, and it's meant to line up with that li tiny little cut out that you can just see on the pulley there, so. You can see that's nicely in line. So what I'm gonna do now, because that's a little bit awkward to see, once, now that I know that it's in line, I'm just going to put a tiny little paint mark on the pulley here. 
against the back there and it's just loads easier to refer to rather than trying to keep looking at that little mark down there because i'm sort of looking at it from on top it's a little bit tricky to say what see when you're bang on in line so just put paint marks nice easy reference so just put paint mark quick on there and then we'll get on to taking the tensioner off after that Nice. So now we've got a little paint mark on the pulley. We've got that to go off, which is a little bit clearer to see. The next thing we're going to do is just undo the actual tensioner and then the, as you want, a 10mm Allen key for the bolt there for the roller as well. So with the tensioner, just held on by 10 2mm bolts. So we'll just undo all them now and then get the timing belt off. That's the tensioner out. Now you can reuse the tensioner if you want. Basically, it's just got a hole through there and a hole through there. It's about a one and a half mil pin that you'd need to use it, but you basically just cr uh, clamp it up like in a vise or with a G clamp and just put a pin through it. And then you can lock it off to refit it, that's all. But obviously we're replacing that. I'll just get the tension roller off now with a 10 mil Allen key. Just before getting the tensioner off, just get the belt off as well. Now this belt has been replaced before, it's got a Deco belt on it, it's not an original belt. Um, but it's hard to check the condition sometimes of cam belts. Sometimes if they're really old you'll start to see them cracked and perish. But if you sort of pinch them inwards like that, and sometimes see if they're quite worn, they get quite a few cracks across them. But this one doesn't look in too bad a condition. Um, we don't know when it was done last, so we're having to uh, replace it. Right, so that's the tensioner roller out. We're going to be reusing the bolt for it. As you can see, it's probably quite a good job we're replacing it. Because obviously the grease has just started to come out of it a bit there as well. So there's no no free play in it. Don't you feel too bad? And it sounds okay. Um, but if the grease is starting to come out, it's not usually a good sign. So we'll just get that out, get that aside now, and run you through getting everything back together. And just before we refit the tensioner and roller, just going to make sure, I've just double checked this one, but just make sure that your, your marks are bang on in line after taking your belt off. Just make sure when you took the belt off, you didn't disturb the fuel pump or anything like that, but just recheck that, it's bang on in line. So next thing I'm going to do is just fit the tensioner, the roller and the tensioner on. Now because the, the locking pin's through there, you need to leave this in until everything's all fitted and the belt's all on. That'll leave that pin in, which leaves you a little bit of slack to allow you to get the belt on. So next thing we're gonna do is just put these two bits on. The torque settings for the, the main bolt there is 35 newton meters, and the two 10 mils for the actual tensioner piece are 13 newton meters. So we'll just get them fitted on now, and then we'll run you through just putting the belt on. Right, so now we're ready to refit the belt. Now some belts have arrows on it and you should always run them the arrows pointing in the direction that the engine turns over. If it hasn't got arrows on it, this one hasn't. It's good practice, you want to be fitting it so the right end's reading in the direction that it's turning over. And some belts also have timing marks on them, not all the time, but if it has got them, it's always nice to just line them up as like a second check as well. But basically this has got marks on it, so that one there, we'll line that up on the camshaft. And this one will actually line up with the fuel pump as well there. So just a nice little second check when they have got them to make sure it lines up. You know you're bang on in line again as well. Um, the next thing you need to do, basically need when we're refitting the belt, put it around the fuel pump first because there's a big lip on it. And then work it up and around the camshaft. You need to keep this side of it really taut and leave the slacky side around where the tensioner is. Obviously the tensioner will take up the slack. So just get that fitted now and just run you through a step after that.
Now, as you can see, the timing belt's on now. It's a little bit tight to do, more so because I was trying to line these marks up as well. I was just trying to get them bang on just for the video. I don't always line them up because I'm pretty happy and confident doing it, knowing that I've got the timing marks lined up. But if you're a little bit unsure, it's always worth just lining them up as well. Um, I didn't actually torque the bolts earlier on. I just nipped them up lightly. So I'm just going to run around just torque these up now. So 35 newton metres for the big one and then 13 newton metres each on them 10 mils. I've just left this pin in for now just until I've torqued them up. Once I've torqued them up, we'll just release that pin, put the tension on the belt there. I'll just show you now that it's on, you can see we're still lined up there. Obviously the, the mark on the belt's lined up there as well. Just show you down the, you can see the paint marks obviously lined up. If you look down the bottom on the belt, you can just see where that lines up with the groove on there. And just to double check, you can just see that the pointer's lined up bang on there as well. So. We know everything's absolutely bang on now. We'll just quickly run around, just talk them up, and as soon as it's talked up, I'll just pull this pin out. Right, so we're all talked up now. We're happy the timing marks, marks are absolutely bang on. Next thing we're going to do is just release this pin and that'll just put the tension on the belt. You can see at the minute it's quite slack while the tension's off it. Now that that's on there, put the tension on the belt. The next thing we're going to have to do now, you don't have to do this, but it's always good practice with the timing belt just to turn the engine over just by hand on the crankshaft there. We're just going to watch one full lap of the camshaft and just make sure that everything lines up bang on again if there is an issue and it's gone a tooth out or anything like that it's just a case of obviously taking the tension off resetting it and retensioning it again myself but we'll just get the 22 mil uh, socket on it again just turn it over and just double check it quick Right, so we've just done one full lap of the camshaft. Now, I didn't say earlier on, but the line on the belt won't actually line up once you've spun it over. That's just for reference when you're first doing it, that's all. The main thing we're concerned about is the line on the pulley there, making sure it lines up with the arrow at the back there. And you can see that's absolutely bang on. And then we've got our paint mark on the fuel pump there, which again, is lined up nicely. And you can just check down the side if you want to do. You can just see the marker there is lined up bang on as well. So. At this stage now, I can just put everything back together. The torque settings for the casing bolts are six newton meters if you want to torque them up. If you're not using a torque wrench, six newton meters is quite a light nip. So um, we're just going to get it back together now. So just speed through some of that and just run you through just striking it up once we've got it back together. Right, so everything's back together now, exactly as it was before we took it apart. Next thing we're going to do is just strike it up. Just when you're striking it up, just get ready to turn it off in case there's an issue. Um, but basically, if you strike it up and it sounds okay, next thing you want to do is just come around, just have a look. Just make sure it sounds okay from the front here. Just have a quick look at your auxiliary belt, make sure it's running true, make sure you haven't disturbed anything with that while you've been near it. And make sure the fan looks like it's spinning okay there. So, um, But we're just going to strike it up quick now, just have a quick listen, make sure it's okay. So just turned it off now, as you can see, sounded spot on, stuck straight up, no problems at all. Auxiliary belt looked okay. Um, so that's the timing belt replacement procedure. Just thought I'd put the video together in case anyone wanted to have a go at theirs. Now the next thing I'll show you just to finish the video is this, um, this model does have a light on the dash for the timing belt replacement as well. So just quickly get in the cab and just run you through how to reset the light for that as well. 
Uh, so just run you through how to reset the T-belt light now. Now there is, this has got this little setup on it. It does make a loud beep as I'm doing it, but I'll try and explain it as clearly as possible. And I'll just list the um, instructions just on the screen as well. So um, I've just put the ignition on to start with. You can just see little T-belt light there. Now, if you're not on the main trip screen, which is this one there with the main miles and you're on any of these trip ones to start with, well, the ignition's on, just cycle through to get to the main screen which is this one there that shows you miles or kilometers on there and at this stage we're just going to turn the ignition off and then we're going to turn it back we're going to press and hold this button and turn it on so just try and get it as best as i can on camera while doing it so now i've just pressed the button with the ignition off I'm just going to wait five seconds i'm going to release the button within five seconds press the button briefly you'll get nine there which is for 90,000 kilometers and then press and hold the button just keep it depressed for about five seconds till it disappears and if your lights on your lights should then go off there now you might get 15 up which is depends on the model if it's 15 it's set for 150,000 if it's nine it's set for 90,000 that's all and then once that's done the lights should go out uh, but i'll put the procedure on there as well um, but yeah that's it it's the timing belt done and the light reset hope you liked the video if you did give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.